This is a video about a fungus spreading throughout the forests of the southeastern U.S. that might make gumbo and guacamole a thing of the past. But this is also a personal story because this blight just started ravaging the forest where I live. Not just Houston, but my specific neighborhood is the latest battleground for a plant-destroying fungus that might make avocado toast extinct. So there are several trees that grow in the southeast that are really aromatic and known for their use in cooking. This is the Lauraceae family, and it includes plants like the spice bush, swamp bay, red bay, avocado, and sassafras. You likely only know the avocado, but the other trees are indigenous species to the U.S. The red bay, for example, is basically a native bay tree like the Mediterranean one that costs five dollars for a dozen leaves at the store. You're likely shocked to learn that a bay tree grows here natively. So was I, which was why I was excited to learn that they were growing literally everywhere in my neighborhood. We stopped buying bay leaves, and after using the leaves fresh, I actually understand that yes, they do have a flavor. If you're like me, you've heard the word sassafras, but probably think it's just a cute word or possibly a type of old-timey root beer. That's actually sarsaparilla, but sassafras root is the original flavor for root beer. Sassafras is a fra fragrant plant with cool tri-lobed leaves that are ground down to make a spice called filet. This filet powder is added to gumbo after it's done to thicken it up and add flavor. If you're from this area, you've probably had filet in your gumbo. It's sometimes sitting on the table at restaurants. For everyone else, you probably never had it before, but what does it taste like? I've heard foragers say the leaves smell like Fruit Loops, which Chelsea and I both agree is 100% accurate. It definitely smells like some kind of fruit flavored cereal. This stuff is sassy. Filet is super cool because it's a reminder that some of the most iconic foods in the US aren't imported from Europe, but are firmly based in traditions passed down from the indigenous inhabitants of this land. One theory even posits that the word gumbo itself comes from the Choctaw word for filet powder, combo. Sassafras is such a unique aspect of Louisiana heritage that the trilobed leaves often appear as a symbol of Creole identity, as can be seen on the Louisiana Historic and Cultural Beasts website. And sassafras is already on the ropes because of loss of habitat, over-harvesting poachers, and the yellow poplar weevil. But now this cultural heritage is at risk due to this monster. The red bay ambrosia beetle. It's an insect with an interesting life cycle. The females have these sacs above their jaws that are specially adapted for fungal transport. And in these mushroom sacs, they carry Raphali lauricola, or laurel wilt. Attracted by the smell, the beetle will bore into one of our fragrant trees, lay several eggs, and deposit the fungus for their babies to eat once they hatch. The fungus attacks the host tree, growing to produce more food for the baby beetles, killing the tree within weeks. The red bay ambrosia beetle is native from India to Japan and was first spotted in the U.S. in 2002 in Georgia. Since then, it's been wrecking havoc on tree populations and very slowly spreading across the south. And in 2022, it hit home for us. This beetle's no joke. In 2022, a woman in my parents' neighborhood noticed her trees were turning brown and that sawdust was piling up at their bases. When she called the Forest Service to take a look, they confirmed that it was indeed... The trees were dead within weeks. I only learned to identify a red bay in late 2021, but once I started to recognize the trees, I started seeing them everywhere, and everywhere they were looking brown and sickly. My parents had a tree come down in their yard in 2020, and looking back, in my memories, I thought that it had the shape of a bay tree. I looked in their yard to confirm, and lo and behold, there were the shoots of a beleaguered red bay trying to grow back from the trunk. In 2022, we noticed a fragrant tree with beautiful fall foliage also in my parents' yard. By the time I had identified it as a sassafras with iNaturalist, it was already infected with laurel wilt and dead within a month. One of the recommendations for how to handle infected trees is to cut them down, chip them, and leave the chips on site. This prevents the spread of the disease by someone deciding to use the logs for firewood at a different location. My parents read about the disease in the papers, read the recommendation, and misinterpreted the guidance to me and cut the tree and have it hauled off. 
Come on! Unfortunately, innocent misunderstandings like that happen constantly and lead to the spread of the disease. And what about the lifeblood of an entire generation? The green goo that makes the world go round? The avocado. Avocados are a laurel, and some varieties even have fragrant leaves used for cooking. And like the red bay and sassafras, they are in serious danger from the laurel wilt disease. Currently, the disease is taking its toll in the Florida avocado industry, but luckily, there is a lot of desert between the forests of the southeastern U.S. and southwestern Mexico where Americans get most of our avocados. The beetle can fly, but not that far. So far, it seems like most of the spread has been from the transport of firewood. But if by some act of globalization, a red bay ambrosia beetle makes it to Mexico, we're in big trouble. So what's being done? What can we do? If you live in the southeast and you notice your tree is turning brown, it's time to call an arborist. If they identify it as laurel wilt, have the tree chipped and left on site. Make sure none of the tree leaves your property. I wouldn't have the stump removed because there's a chance the tree will grow back from the roots. An arborist might be able to save a tree with fungicide, but leave it to the professionals. Demand your state's agricultural department do something about this. We need to fund the research for a cure. There is some work being made on a vaccine, but it doesn't seem to be moving along quickly. The only public outreach campaign is the Florida Department of Ag's Save the Guac campaign, but their recommendations just come down to burn local firewood. We need major help if we're gonna save these trees. Spread the word. These are culturally important trees and they're dying out across the country. People need to know about this. Journalists need to report this. Like we mentioned in our plant blindness video, people don't seem to have an emotional connection to plants if they could even see them at all. The loss of the spice bush or the sassafras should be felt as devastating an impact on our country as the loss of the buffalo. And it is! Develop the feels for these plants and we might be able to save them and the world around them to boot. I've noticed that many of the trees do seem to be coming back from the trunks so the wilt hopefully won't completely wipe these trees out. Similar to the story of the American chestnut, we might be left with zombie groves of trees that will grow back only to get reinfected and die every couple of years. This means we have time to figure out a cure or a way to eliminate the invasive beetles. There is a lot of money being spent on fighting off the citrus greening disease attacking Florida's citrus industry. And because of the large cultural impact the American chestnut had, there's a massive nationwide effort to bring them back as well. But lesser known trees like the swamp bay, red bay, spice bush, or sassafras that are important to Native American tribes and small pockets of American society don't have the backing of major industries or even much space in our popular culture. The fact that this disease also affects avocados is, and is currently devastating Florida's $35 million a year avocado crop will hopefully push state universities and biotech firms to work to find a solution. But it's unfortunate that in our current system, we need to have a financial reason to save an entire family of beautiful trees that support our local ecosystems and food cultures. We can imagine instead a world where our priorities are shifted towards maintaining a healthy ecosystem for all. Where instead of people begging for research dollars or finding time to volunteer in restoration on the weekends, people are free to put their energy into rewilding, repairing, and protecting the world around us. Where massive portions of the population are employed to restore ecosystems. We know that we can solve just about any problem that we put our collective minds and energy towards. And with that energy focused on building a thriving world, we would be in paradise before our grandchildren are even born. And when those grandchildren are finally here, they might just say, who doesn't know what a sassafras tree is? Here's to a weirder future.